happy Sabbath. I welcome you all to today's Sabbath as we begin our lesson discussion. From wherever you are, you can join us as we continue this discussion. I will introduce myself. Uh, I am Lilian Ochanda, and my colleague is Joseph Macharia. We will take you through lesson two, which is about the covenant primer. And I'll ask that Macharia to pray for us as we begin. Kwa kipaji cha uhai na kwa kuwa umeturida na kutufikisha hii ya subuhi jema ikiwa ni katika sabato ya takatifu. Mungu baba wa biguni tunapoelekea kuigia katika leseni. Tunaomba roho wako awe nasi atuogoze ili kile ambacho ulikusudia kupitia kwa waandishi tukipate tuweze kukipata na kiwe cha faida katika maisha yetu ya Ukristo maana tumeoba haya tukiaminia yote kwa Yesu Kristo aliye Bwana na mkobozi wetu amina So our lesson is about the promise and majorly we are going to look at the covenants that we have in the Bible. Last week we learned about what happened. We saw that in the beginning that uh, God created Adam and Eve. And as he created them, he wanted to form a relationship with them. So when he created them, he had love towards them. But what did they do? They were able to sin against God. But we see that there was a plan that Christ was to come and save them. Uh, so we see that God created uh, to be in a relationship and that sin separated them from God. But Jesus Christ was able to come. And we can see in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 where we are told that while we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us. So that is the promise that we all look upon uh, for us to do everything that is according to God's plan. So today we are going to look at the covenant primer where we will have our memory text from the book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 which tells us now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine we see that uh, we have this everlasting covenant that each and every one of us looks upon, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. In the beginning we see that there was a lamb that was slain due to the sin that Adam and Eve committed. So with this, we see that there is a covenant of redemption that God has prepared for us. Uh, grace was even given to us before we even sinned. We also see that we have a covenant that is a divine plan of God to us. There is a progressive unfolding that we are going to learn through this covenant. We see the covenant of Noah. After that, we see the covenant of Abraham. Then we see the covenant of Moses. Then after which it will build up to the everlasting covenant, which is the new covenant. So that is a brief introduction of the covenant primer. But we also see that uh, by the covenant of grace, Christ offers himself in a special relationship with humankind. We can see uh, about some basics of the covenant. We should understand what a covenant means and what really a covenant entails. We will see that a covenant involves uh, more than one party, so meaning it can be two parties, whereby they have an agreement on the terms of what that covenant will entail. So with this, there is a relationship that is built between those two parties before they even enter into a covenant. We see a statement that uh, was made to Abraham from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 2. I'll request my brother to read. Uh, 
Genesis 17 verse 2 it says then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers thank you we see that and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly we see this is a, a statement that was given to Abraham uh, in this statement, we see that a covenant binds two parties together. So we see the party that there was God and there was also Abraham in that covenant. So with that, uh, we are able to see some elements that are included in the covenant. The first element, we see that God affirmed the covenant promises with an oath. We can see that from Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. I will ask my brother to read Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Galatians 3 16 says, The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scriptures does not say and to seeds, meaning many people, but unto your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. Yeah, we see that there was a promise that was made to Abraham. We also see this in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 13 and 17, which says, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he, swear by, he swore by himself, wherein God willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath so we see in a covenant we have the promises uh, the promises and we also see there is an oath here we see that God is the one who takes the oath he tells them that I am meaning that he cannot be compared to any other God so he makes a promise he gives promises we see that Abraham was given a lot of promises when we reach there we shall see the promises that Abraham was be able to be given. We also see the second thing that the covenant obligation was obedience to God, to God's will as expressed in the Ten Commandments. In a covenant, the parties, there are parties that will be obliged to obey on what they have agreed upon. So we see that uh, this obedience is like a fruit that shows that we are saved. And when we obey, we are keeping the covenant that we are in. We also see that the third thing is the means by which God's covenant obligation is ultimately fulfilled is through Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation. So we enter into a covenant with God when we accept the everlasting covenant, which is this everlasting covenant. The everlasting covenant is Jesus Christ himself. So when we accept Christ into our lives and we are born again, we enter into a covenant with God and he binds us with him as we are obligated to do everything according to his will by obeying these things. So we can also finish the covenant basics by looking at the book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 14. Daniel chapter 9 verse 14 where we see that therefore had the Lord washed upon the evil and brought it upon us the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth for we obey not his voice sorry it's not that Daniel chapter 9 verse 4 which says and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said O Lord the great and dreadful God keeping the co covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments we see that in everything that we do God is love and that's why he desires to keep a covenant relationship between us and himself and when we do that we're going to follow his will according to how he tells us to do and it will not be a hard thing for us to do I would like my brother Macharia to proceed with a covenant with Noah Thank you, sister. 
uh, for taking us through that introductory part and also introducing us on the covenant basic. And now we shall look on the first covenant which is found in the Bible, that is the covenant with Noah. This is the very first covenant that is found in the scriptures, showing that after man had fallen, now God had already devised a plan to rescue man from sin. Because when sin came to the world, we know that man became subject to death. But now, when evil spread in the world, God saw that it was better for him to do away with that current world. But now he found one righteous man, that was Noah, living in that era. And now he decided to, to, to save this man together with his family. That's why, why, why we get from the book of Genesis 6.18. 6, and I will request my sister to read us through that verse, Genesis 6, verse 18, where God is making his covenant with Noah. The Bible says, Genesis 6, verse 18, But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. Thank you, thank you very much. Now we see that God is telling Noah, uh, and before he told him this, he had already put it clear to him what he wanted to do with that current word. He wanted to, uh, to do away with it, or he wanted to make an end to that sinful generation. And that is why he is telling Noah, now you will build an ark. And before he told him that, he told him, but with thee, as I will be heading this generation, you, it will not be so with you. Because he found, Noah, he found that Noah was brainless. Noah was a man who was following God's discourse. He followed God's commands. He was faithful to all his ways. In all his ways, he was faithful to God. And that is why God decided, decided to save him that the seed which was promised in Genesis 3 verse 15 may come forth. Because if all people could be uh, uh, could be destroyed in that era then where could be this seed come for where could it come from but now because god has promised uh, to abraham uh, to adam that you are said he had uh, he had made a promise in genesis 3 verse 15 which we read in the prior study of the last sabbath and i will want us to reread it again genesis 3 verse 15. Uh, the bible can... says <laughs> and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed yeah. it shall bruise thy heel and thou shalt bruise his heel now we see there is a seed from the woman which we very know that it is christ christ was who was the one who was being spoken about when God was speaking about the seed. And now this seed had to come from human being. So that's why when he was destroying the world in the time of Noah, he had to reserve a remnant for him so that the seed might come from this generation, from the generation of Adam. And now God found one man, that is Noah, who was righteous and faithful in all his ways. And that is why he promised to him that, but with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt not come, and thou shalt come into the ark, and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee. And now, uh, this covenant with Noah was a covenant of, was a covenant of grace. This is through love. This is love that propelled God to save Noah. It's through his grace. And that's why we see in a covenant, 
there is there is this involvement of the two parties uh, the involvement of the two parties and there is what one party needs to do and the other one needs to do and now in this case Noah had to build the ark Noah had to be, to believe in God and Noah had to show his faith in God that God had told me that the world will come to an end and now he has commanded me to build the ark so what i need to do is to press forward and build the ark so that when the world will be being destroyed i will be saved so this brings to our mind that whenever god had made a covenant with man there is a part for us as human beings which we need to do and that is obedience we have to show obedience because if we doesn't obey that means in our part we have in our part we have broken the co the covenant but if we obey we show clearly that we have adhered to the covenant and we are wearing that this covenant may be fulfilled in our lives and now when god commanded noah noah obeyed and built the ark and that's why we see after the flood came noah entered uh, before the flood came seven days prior noah entered the ark and then after the seven days the flood uh, the flood came and the storm fell onto the world and the world was fully flooded and now here we see that many people argue that the flood was just was not worldwide but from the bible itself we have faith that the flood was worldwide because that world was devastated by the flood in the time of noah but we see then if the flood was not worldwide then god command god's covenant could be broken because we experience this flood in some parts of the world now time and then but there is no other worldwide flood which has been experienced from the time of noah so we see that god is a god who fulfills his covenant and he keeps his covenant from generations to generation as we see as we witness from the book of psalms psalms 105 105 verses verse 8 you can take us through it. Psalms 105 verse 8 the Bible says he has remembered his covenant forever the word which he commanded to a thousand generations yeah we see that God remembers his covenant forever the promises he made for a thousand generation they have to come to uh, they have to be they are true they have to be fulfilled that's why we see if god has promised us something we don't need to we need not to 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 what yeah we don't need to worry but what we need to do is to have faith and to obey and by our obedience as Noah was saved then at the end of the times because we have seen in many in many verses in the bible that jesus was telling the people who, who, uh, his followers as it was in the times of noah then it will be in the time of the end so if we have faith and we obey god just as noah was saved then we will be saved and now i would like to invite my sister Lillian if she has an addition she will add and then she will take us through the covenant with adam abraham yes sorry thank you as we have seen about the covenant of noah we also see that god calls us the way he called noah that we accept and we should be faithful till the end as noah was faithful and the promises of noah were fulfilled he was blessed they were told to replenish the earth to fill it they were able to give birth to children and the children were able to give birth to children so they were blessed so if we 
live according to how Noah lived. He accepted this covenant and he he stood by the terms that were there. If we do so, we will also uh, be saved in the end of time. So let us make a choice to be faithful to each and everything that God tells us. We, we can now come to the covenant with Abraham. Our key text is Genesis chapter 12 verse 3, but we will begin from Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and see what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse which that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. We see that Abraham was called by God. Uh, he was not a believer in the beginning, but when he was called by God, we see that he accepted. Even though he never knew what will come after, he was able to accept what God had told him and to believe in the promises that he could not see at that time, but they were to be fulfilled in the future. So we see that uh, God made some promises, and the promises are eight, which we have read from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. We see the first one, which is to take him out of, out of that land that he was living in, into a promised land. Abraham was able to believe that God will take him out of this land and bring him to the land that he had told him even though he was not sure of that land, but he was able to believe in that promise. We also see that he was going to make him a great nation. Uh, we see also the third promise, which was to bless and make his name great. We see also that he was to, to be a blessing to others. He was, he was also to bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him and all the families will be blessed through Abraham himself. We see those eight promises that God made to Abraham, and in due time they were able to be fulfilled, even though Abraham died. We see that in future generations, we see the, we see the, the way that God blessed the family of Abraham, and the seed came from the family of Abraham, who is Jesus Christ. Uh, we also see that Abraham was able to create a relationship with God himself. And he was told uh, of the promises, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. We see that it, this thing is repeated, is repeated many times. It shows the greatness of God. And it shows that God uh, is a God of promise. As he tells them, I will, I will do this, I will do this. It is able to be fulfilled. And it, it shows also that he is committed to these promises that he gives to his children. We also see that Abraham was given a command, go forth. He was told to go and leave that land that was in to leave his family, his ancestral land, but Moses was, uh, he was faithful enough to believe in God and move from that land that he was in. He obeyed, as we are told, uh, about the covenant. In a covenant, there's always obedience. Obedience is needed for a covenant to be fulfilled. He was able to move from that land and go to the land that God had promised him. We also see that, uh, this obedience was a response for his faith. Abraham believed, even though he never knew God, it was the first time that God appeared to him. He was able to believe, and he moved according to how he was told. So this shows the love that Abraham also had for God, even though he did not know him. We also see that... Uh, Abraham exemplifies the relationship between faith and works. If Abraham did not believe in what God 
had told him. He could not move from the land that he was told. But because of this obedience, he had faith. And through the works that he did, he was able to move from that place to the place that he was told. He showed the works. And we are told that uh, we are saved by grace through faith. But in James, we are also told that faith without works is dead. So even if we have the faith, we should also show the works that show that indeed we really have this faith. Yeah, so if my brother has something to add on the covenant of Abraham, you can add. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lillian. And I would like to add one thing on this. Uh, thank you for the, the thing that you have just brought in of faith and work. When God commanded Abraham to move from the land of his own to the land of unknown, Abraham believed in God first. He believed that this is the only true God who fulfills his promises forever and ever from generation to generation. So once he believed, he obeyed. And when he, once he obeyed, he did. So there is three, these three things. You must believe, you must obey, and then you must show it by the works. So the, uh, the, this brings us to, uh, to this understanding that faith without work is dead because Abraham believed and he did. He went out and he went to the land of unknown because he believed. So if we have faith in God, we need to take a step and do according to what he has commanded us. Because if we, we believe and it is not evident in our deeds, that, that shows that our, our faith is void. But if we believe and, and it is witnessed in our characters, this shows that the faith we have in God has helped us to make a step. This is the living faith, the faith which Abraham had. So, and we are told that we become the the what the the, the we become Israelites. We are Israelites. We are spiritual Israelites, and the the Israelites of that time came from Abraham because Abraham was the father of faith. So if we believe and we do, we show our faith and actions, they must, be, they must be accompanied together. Faith must be accompanied with actions. You can't have faith and you fail to act because Abraham did, Abraham had, Abraham did. So we need to hear and we need to act so that we may uh, these promises may be fulfilled in our lives so we will move on to the covenant with moses which is the covenant this covenant with moses is the covenant that has uh, is carries a lot of weight in our christian lives because this is where uh, this covenant was a fulfillment first of the promises God made to Abraham. Because God told Abraham that certainly you are, you are descendants will be slaves in, will be enslaved for 400, for 400 years. And this came to be. And now, after these 400 years, God is fulfilling what he promised to Abraham. Now, in the time of Moses, after he heard the groans of the sons of Israel when they were living in Egypt. And now, God remembered his covenant. He remembered what he promised to his faith servant, Abraham. And now he comes to act. That's why he called Moses. And as we read from Genesis 6, from verse 1 to 8, we will see that it was a fulfillment to the promises he made with Abraham and also 
it was a, it, he, he made a new covenant with his people. He first saved them from the hands of the oppressors and then he gave he made now a new covenant with them. So in this we also witness that we are saved first and then we are called to obey. So we shall read from Genesis uh, from Exodus 6 from verse 1 to 8. Our sister Lillian, I request you to read for us. Exodus 6, verse 1 to 8, the Bible says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them, and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also had the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will read you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with the great judgments, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Now, as we see, God is narrating this to Moses. This was what he told Abraham. And now he has remembered the promises he made to Abraham. So this one shows us that God is a God who honors his promises. He honors the covenant he made with human beings. So, so this shows that the relationship now between God and man is, is tight because how God is a God who we knows who is God. We know where he dwells. But now, this God who created us he made a promise to us, he made a covenant to us, and now he is remembering this covenant he made with human beings. Uh, creatures of fresh knowledge, creatures uh, who are sinful, always we, 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 we disobey God. But now, uh, even though we disobey him, God is faithful, God remains faithful. God is faithful to all generations. That's why you see he is recording that promises he made to Abraham and now he is bringing the, the Israelites out of Egypt. He is saving them. And now after saving them, he went forth and gave them the law that they should obey. They were to obey the law after they were saved. So this shows that in nowadays, when Christ died for us, Christ saved us, and he called us to obey the same, same commandments, but now by grace, through grace, we were saved. But it doesn't mean that when grace came, the law was abolished. No, the law stands. But now, what we need is to show our obedience because we have been saved all from that sinful nature which was acquired in the Garden of Eden. And now, Christ, when Christ died for us and saved us, he has called us to obey the commandments of God that what he promised us will be fulfilled in its time. And now we will also see that in this, uh, this, this, uh, this, this covenant with Moses, there is three things that, uh, that elapse here. We can see 
this relationship with with uh, this relationship of Israelite with God was a special one. The second thing, obedience was required from the Israelites now, and then God promised to bless them also. So there is a promise. There is what needs uh, needs us. Uh, there is what is required of us, and there is that thing that shows. This relationship with God, between God and human is a great relationship. It's a relationship that can't be broken. It's the relationship of love. Because if there was no love, if God didn't love human beings, could him bother to save us? Could him bother to save Noah? Could him bo bother to, uh, to rescue the Israelites from the heart of the oppressors in Egypt? He couldn't, but because he was prepared by that love of this foreign lease, that's why you see he is remembering the promises he made from the, from the beginning. And now this also brings us now to the new covenant. Because all these covenants were to guide us to the new covenant, to the covenant which was to come, which was Christ. And I would like us to, I would like to invite my sister Lillian to take us through that as she adds on the covenant with Moses. Thank you. We see that in the covenant with Moses, it is also a covenant of grace, where we see that this covenant is based on redemption. We can see this from the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. And the Bible says, And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out of from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. So God will redeem the children of Israel. We also see that it is a covenant that was based on relationship as in Exodus 6 verse 7. And I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bring, bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So we see also it's a covenant that is based on relationship. It is also a covenant that is based on God's promises. Which promises? These promises are the Ten Commandments. We all read the Ten Commandments as what we should do and what we should not do. But it is deeper. These commandments are promises that will come to be fulfilled in the future. We can move to the new covenant. Read from Jeremiah chapter 31 to 33. I will ask my brother to read. Uh, Jeremiah, that one, that one to that three, it says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with the ancestors when I took them in out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. Though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I made with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and light it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Thank you. So again, once again, we see that God is the one who initiates this covenant as from the beginning. We see that God is the one who gives these promises, and he also initiates the covenant and what we are supposed to do. Our work is only obedience uh, to him and everything will be okay. So we see that uh, we see that uh, from that Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 to 33 we see where we are told 
from verse 32 not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break although I was an husband unto them save the Lord we see that God is the husband what does this mean we can see from the book of John chapter 15 verse 1 John chapter 15 verse 1 the Bible says I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman so Christ tells us that God himself is the husbandman in the Bible we see that uh, Christ is ref God is referred to the to the husband and we also see that a bride is referred to the church we see that uh, God is the one who prunes us as in, in verse 2 we are told that every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit so God is the one who prunes us and when we are pruned it is not an easy thing we feel bad when we when we are corrected most of the times we are not happy but it is for the benefit of us at the end of it all so we yes, we see that uh, the way fruits can be produced uh, through us is by abiding in his son jesus christ without christ in us uh, without christ in us we cannot bear the fruit and we cannot work independently without christ in us christ is the one who made it mediates for us to the father so without him there is nothing that we can do we see that also this new covenant was to be written in our hearts it is not like the literal ten commandments that were written on the tablets but it was to be written in our hearts so it shows us that when we accept christ when we are born again these laws are able to be written in our hearts that when we do something we we are able to reflect and know that this is what is right or this is what is wrong this is because christ is in us and he's leading us in everything that we do we see that uh, the new covenant does not abolish the, the ten commandments but it reaffirms our obligations to it and to the god that it represents this commandments are not abolished but it's a reaffirmment so we can see this from hebrews chapter 10 verse 16 you can read uh, hebrews 10 verse 16 it says this is the covenant i may i will make with them after that time says the lord i will put my laws in their hearts and i will make and i will write them on the yamites thank you we also see that the new covenant makes god's law inescapable we cannot escape from these laws when we commit sin we feel the guilt that is in us that's why this new covenant is able to show us what we are supposed to do we can see this from first john chapter 3 verse 20 first john chapter 3 verse 20 the bible says for if our heart condemns us god is greater than our heart and knoweth all things we also see that the law of god refuses to deaden our awareness of evil we cannot escape from these laws we also see that it is impossible to be in a covenant relationship with god if we ignore the laws that he has given to us so finally i will say that god's covenant is everlasting and we should be in an everlasting relationship with him and with also christ jesus christ jesus will is also part of the covenant and when we do this the promises that god has given us will be fulfilled into our lives thank you thank you sister lady I would like to add something small on that topic of the new covenant where we see God lighting the laws in our hearts. First thing, 
this shows that God is bringing that relationship between human beings and him closer now because now he is no longer writing them on the tablets but now in our hearts that is that means it is simply means when we received Christ we received Christ in ourselves so Christ carries everything he is the one who gave these commandments but now he is dwelling in our in our hearts so the commandments are dwelling where in our hearts so if you sin that conviction will come from the inside that I have sinned against the one who is inside me so this will this will help us and will lead us to repentance that's why you see it's by grace we are saved but not by grace alone it's by grace through faith and faith alone not faith alone but because faith and uh, commandments also oh, if, if we move, if we can lead the, uh, the if we can lead on uh, uh, Revelation 12 verses uh, 14 verses 12 we can see that the people of God doesn't rely on faith alone but this faith must be evident by obeying the commandments of who of God that's why we see it leads and the, it leads this calls for patient and endurance for the part of the people of God who keeps his commandments and remains faithful to Jesus so keeping the commandments and being faithful goes hard in hard so you can't say you are faithful and you say you are not you will not keep the commandments because this is where people many people has gotten have got lost because they are saying we are saved by grace so the the commandments were nailed on the cross so we doesn't need to obey the commandments we just Christ in ourselves but this now shows us clearly that if Christ dwells in us we will obey his commandments but if we disobey this also means that we are not saved then by that grace because uh, because grace doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't mean that when grace came uh, the commandments were done away with the commandments remains and they will be there even in the new heaven in the new world we will live by them because they are uh, they, they 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 are by grace it's by grace we they dwells in us so that is what i had to add on it and also we can see that god wants us to be something to him and he wants him to be something to us so god values human being even though we were foreign he is calling us to repentance and to receive christ in our hearts that we may be saved and that the original plan the original things which were there in the garden of eden we may be brought to them we may be gotten back to them which were there prior because the thing which made which made god to lay down a plan of salvation is that which was there uh, that which was there in the earlier times because before sin came to the world may be reformed back so christ calls us to believe in him to have faith in him and that th that faith may be evident in our daily today lives in our characters in the way we clothe in the way we do our things that it may reflect the character of christ which now dwells in us thank you a lot okay we will end with the book of psalms chapter 40 verse 8 let this be our prayer i delight to do thy will O oh my god yeah thy law is within my heart we will end there let us have a word of prayer 
our heavenly father we come before you this day we thank you for you've enabled us to have a discussion on the covenants that were there before dear lord we pray that you may help us that we may stick to the covenant that is everlasting dear lord may we believe in you and trust in you and also let us be faithful till the end dear lord may you be with us and guide us in everything that we do i pray this believing and trusting in your holy name amen